the P-series test because it's not a P-series. A P-series has to be the sum exactly of that form. P-series has to be exactly of that form. So what you're doing is you're comparing it to a P-series because it's, it's comparable to a P-series. But you can't, yeah, if you just say P-series, you get one point on that one because that's not a P-series. And I mean, brain some means you might take one off because that's not a P-series. Yeah, Are you saying over here that n is greater than or equal to 2 with n starting at 1? Um, okay, but this is a little subtle. But what I showed was that this is less than or equal to this. Every step here is reversible. So if n is greater than or equal to 2, then this is greater than or equal to this. Right? Moving? That's what I've shown. But you can check it at 1. At n equals 1, it's 1 over 1 to the 1. Is that less than or equal to 1 over 1 squared? Is 1 less than or equal to 1? Check. So it does hold for n equals 1, even though the way I proved it doesn't show that. That's why I like 1. It's, yeah, I have, I'm just baffled. Kind of a special case. I'm baffled. I'm as baffled as you are as to why, since it's true for 1, proving it this way only shows it's true for greater than or equal to 2. But I don't see why. I don't see why it cheats me out of 1, but it does. But anyway, I can check it for 1, and so now I know that this is always less than or equal to that, and I know this is a P-series that converges, so I know this one has to converge. And again, your intuition should be right off the bat, oh my god, the bottom is growing at an unbelievable rate. 2 squared, 3 cubed, 4 to the 4th, 10 to the 10th. That's a huge number, right? I mean, we're talking like our federal budget. Definitely. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's what I did. Yeah, yeah. So what I want so so the way I conclude the problem is I said I claim this is true. I get down to here. Now it's not quite a fair problem because I don't think you can prove that. I don't think you have the algebraic skills or the inductive skills to prove this particular statement. But you can validate that it's true just by using your calculator and say, look, natural log of 1 is less than 1, natural log of 2 is less than 2, natural log, you look at the graph, y equals x and y equals natural log of x, this one's always above this one. Okay. So now what does that leave us with? That leaves us, therefore, the sum from n equals 1 to, oh, sorry, n equals 2 till infinity of natural log of n over n cubed is less than the sum of 1 over n squared from n equals 2 to infinity, which is a p-series and converges. So yes, you are using the p-series test, but even though that's not a p-series, you're using the direct comparison test to compare it to a p-series. Uh, would putting natural log of n and, and the power of, uh, or each the power of natural log of n and prove that converges, uh, you know, you cancel out the natural log. Or Say it again? You know, e to the, uh, if I took e to both sides? Yeah. Well, I thought about that, but I don't think it's going to help. Because you can have n, sorry, less, less than, e to the n, which is also not obvious. Yeah. Equally not obvious, right? <laughs> is n less than e to the n? Yes, because here's y equals x, and here's e to the x. But that's the same argument I gave her here, which is just a picture. Right. Yes, it's true. Is it easy to prove? No. Just goes to show that even simple algebraic statements aren't always easy to prove. Only the ones in college algebra that we made up so that you could solve them. Kind of like factor and polynomials. They're only easy to factor because we made them up by going, okay, x minus 3 times x minus 2 times x minus 4. We multiplied it out, and then we said factor it. <laughs> Same with integrals. Let's see, I want you to integrate sine of x squared. Oh, let's put an x out there. Okay, see, it's easy to integrate. You make one up, I can't integrate. Why did you say that n less than e to the n is not obvious? I, it's intuitively obvious. What I said is I can't write a proof down for it using algebra that ends up with something like we did here, n greater than or equal to 2. I can't apply algebra to both sides to get us. Can't reduce it to n greater than or equal to one or n greater than or equal to two. It is absolutely true. Both statements are this statement is absolutely true and that statement is absolutely true. And you can check it for n equals one, two, three, four, 
And if you go on in math, you'll learn how to prove things by induction. But, but I can't prove it for you today. So if we get to that... You're good. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, if you get to here, you're good. That's a nasty problem. I mean, I might put one evil problem like that on the test, but I won't put very many. Most of them will be wrote straightforward like on the last test. to try to put problems that you should be able to do. Uh, There's the, enough. The next one is natural log of n squared over n squared. Would that make any difference with them both being the uh, same power? The uh, natural log of n squared as well. Oh. Hmm. Well, the top's going to get bigger faster. That's definitely a tougher one. Uh, that's definitely, well, the, the bottom, I suspect, is still growing faster than top. Ah, 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 wait a minute. Never forget your algebra. <laughs> But can I compare that immediately to something? How do you compare it to one over three? We tried that with the one iron cubed. We got in trouble with it. it. Didn't work. We tried like the ratio test. Well. See, last time I went down a degree. I can't go down a degree now. It's going to be, it's going to be one over n. I, I'm not. I think that one converges. I think that one converges, but I'm not sure. You hear there was some hard ones. Do not use the ratio. Nice. Pardon? <laughs> well, you can try the ratio, but I don't think it's going to help us. Let's try it. So you, it, you can end up with the same thing that happened last time when we did the ratio. We're going to end up with n squared over n plus 1 squared times natural log of n plus 1 over natural log of n. That's going to 1, that's going to 1, whole thing's going to 1. No good. Ratio test fails. Um, <coughs> I could try LCT with 1 over N to see if I think it diverges, right? I don't know if this one converges or not. I think it converges. My gut says it converges. Uh, but I don't think this is going to work because I'm going to get N squared over N ln of N, which is the limit as N goes to infinity, of N over ln of N, which is going to be infinity again. So the tops take the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom, I get 1 over 1 over n, limit n equals infinity, so LCT fails. Well, it fails in comparing it to n over 1. n, if I did n squared here, that would be an n squared. I just have 1 over natural log of n, which will go to 0. LCT only works if you get a number. So that's going to fail also comparing it to 1 over n squared. So I think I'm back to direct comparison. I don't, like, I don't want to do a direct comparison. Um, <clears throat> I wonder if it ever, it's not going to become less than that. It's never going to work. Wait a minute, that's true. Are we? This is the same problem? No. Did I screw something up? No, that's the right problem. Was the other one also an n squared in the bottom? It was an n cubed. An n cubed. Huh. Well, look, let's see what we did here. I'm trying a direct comparison test, and so ln of n over n squared, is it less than 1 over n cubed? I multiply, I get this. Oh, no, no, I end up with an n over here, Ted. 
which is not true. So that fails miserably. We tried the we tried the ratio, it failed miserably. How did you do that? I hate to suggest it, but we might have to try to integrate it. You know, when in doubt, that's the worst. I don't know if I can integrate it or not. Hmm? <laughs> right, yeah. You, so that's right. That's, that's, that's why you might be able to in, integrate it with integration by parts. Just be nothing in the next square. Well, you pull the two out, right? Oh, okay. And so I don't care about that. That's, I'm going from this one to this one, so I don't have to worry about the ln of x squared. And so now I'm going to rewrite this as 1 over x times natural log of x times 1 over x dx. And then I can let u be 1 over x and v prime be of x times 1 over x. And u prime is negative 1 over x squared and v is 1 half ln of x all squared. Because the derivative of that is 1 half times 2 times ln of x times the derivative of ln of x is that. And that's that. So this whole thing is this one times this one minus this one times this one. Wow. This one minus this one times this one, so it's a negative and a negative of the plus one over x squared one half ln of x all <coughs> squared dx. So I can integrate it. Um, okay, so look, I, I really want to talk to you about what you need to do next. The integral test works on this one, but it's a nasty integral test because you you remember our integral test when you sometimes had to add things back to the other side? Remember integration by parts when sometimes you had to do it once and then add something back to the other side? Those were the, the nightmares of integration by parts. That's what this is because what I have now is ln, the integral of ln of x over x squared dx equals... 1 over 2x ln squared of x minus the integral plus the integral of 1 half 1 over x squared ln squared of x dx um, oh no I don't have the same thing I started with I can't add it both sides. that's what I wanted <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know that the integral test fails. I just don't see how to integrate it right away. integral test too in the back, so I think it's just really, really nasty. What's it say? It, it suggests an uh, integral test. It suggests the integral test, huh? Well, maybe it's easier to, in easier to integrate in a form that was first in. So we want to integrate. Oh, oh, yeah, in its original form, it was much easier to integrate, huh? Well, without pulling out the, t oh, the t and because square it on top? Without doing log stuff? Well... <laughs> Yes, okay, so if u is x squared, then du is 2x to x, which does not make things nice. Mm. Well, we're running 
out of time, Ted. Yeah, I realize that. You know, this is one problem. <laughs> What's, and I'm sure I'm just not seeing through it right now. Can you uh, use, like back over here, can you use L of X as B prime and 1 over X squared as U? No, backwards, backwards. L of X right. as F or U and 1 over X squared as B prime. We can try it. U prime is 1 over X, B is negative 1 over X. Uh, right? So then it would be ln of x, it would be equal to ln of x times negative 1 over x minus the integral of negative 1 over x squared. Oh yeah, that we can integrate. Yeah. Got it, Joseph. Very nice. Okay, one over x, ln of x minus or plus the integral of one over x squared, which you can finish. But remember, you still have to again. I want to get to the ratio test. I mean, the, to, to 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 the power the uh, power series. You still you're not not anywhere near done here because remember you're integrating from one to infinity. So this is from 1 to infinity, so this has to be from 1 to infinity, so this has to be from 1 to infinity, this has to be from 1 to infinity, this has to be 1 to infinity, right? So you get a finite integral, then you know this guy converges. Um, so, okay, integral test, thanks. I just chose the wrong, I just chose the wrong U and V for my integration by parts. I wonder if the other one could have been approached the same way. Pardon? Or if the other one yeah, the yeah. Same way. it may have been, may have been you could I'll do it the it exact out. same yeah, way. I'll try that. 